We can also be interested in the limiting reagents in reactions. So this happens when reactants are not present in equivalent molar amounts. So when that happens, one of them is going to run out before the other one does. That's the limiting reagent. The reagents that are still present when the limiting reagent is consumed are the excess reagents. When you're done, the amount of excess reagents that are consumed are going to be proportional to the moles of limiting reagent that were there, and the moles of product that are created are going to be proportional to the moles of limiting reagent. However much excess reagent you have doesn't matter. If you don't have a limiting reagent, you're not going to produce the product. Using the same reaction again, I'm going to combine 5 moles of ethane and 10 moles of oxygen, and we find which one is limiting. It doesn't matter which one you start with. Here we'll start with the ethane. So 5 moles of ethane. What's the equivalent molar amount of oxygen? Well, we know that there are 7 moles of oxygen for every 2 moles of ethane, so we'll use that as our conversion factor. Moles of ethane cancel out, and we find that the equivalent amount of oxygen is 17.5 moles. Now here we see that we need 17.5 moles, yet only 10 moles are present. So that means that there's not enough oxygen to react with all of the ethane, and oxygen is the limiting reagent. Using those same numbers, 5 moles of ethane, 10 moles of oxygen, we know that the oxygen is limiting. So how many moles of C2H6 are going to react? Since oxygen is limiting, we start with oxygen to find the proportions of everything else. Starting with 10 moles of oxygen, there's 2 moles of ethane for every 7 moles of oxygen. So that gives us 2.86 moles of ethane are going to react. That's only a little bit more than half of the 5 moles that were there to begin with. Same situation again. 5 moles of C2H6, 10 moles of oxygen. We know that oxygen is limiting. So how many moles of carbon dioxide are produced? Again, that's going to be based on the moles of oxygen that were present to begin with. So we have 10 moles of oxygen. Now our proportion is 4 moles of CO2 for every 7 moles of O2. So that's our conversion factor. The moles of O2 cancel out. We're left with moles of CO2, and we get 5.71. So this tells us that 5.71 moles of CO2 are produced when excess ethane is combusted in the presence of 10 moles of oxygen. Now we'll start with masses. Because remember, masses are what we most commonly encounter in the lab. Masses are what we can measure with a balance. So now we'll say we have 5 grams of ethane and 20 grams of oxygen. Let's see which one is limiting now. We can start with the first one, ethane. See how much oxygen is required to react with 5 grams of ethane and see if the 20 grams that we have is more or less. If it's more, then oxygen is in excess. If it's less, then oxygen is limiting. First, we convert grams of ethane to moles of ethane, so 0.166 moles of ethane. Then we have to convert that to moles of oxygen, so there's 7 oxygen for every 2 moles of ethane. And then we find that we need 0.582 moles of oxygen to react with that 5 grams of ethane. Well, how many grams of oxygen is that? For that, we need to use the molar mass of oxygen. So the moles of oxygen are going to cancel out, and we're left with mass of oxygen. And here we see that we need 18.6 grams of oxygen. That's less than the 20 grams that we have, so oxygen is present in slight excess. The ethane is limiting. 